Hello, welcome to the organic chemistry unit test or study guide. I think this would be a great way to help prepare for your upcoming organic chemistry test. So at the top of each of these slides, there is a title which is going to direct you to another video of mine on this channel. So if you find that these questions are a little bit difficult or you need to hear the content again, that title will direct you to the proper video. To begin, we are going to take a look at the homologous series. So the question here is, to which homologous series does each chemical belong? And then also to name it. We can use a very simple algebraic formula to determine if a chemical formula is part of the alkane, alkene, or alkyne homologous series. To identify if something is an alkane, such as the case in this first compound here, the number of carbons represents N. You, for an alkane, would double that number and then add two, and if it matches, then that's an alkane. So in this case, um, N, the number of carbons, is one. Double that, you get two, add two, and you're up to four. So that tells us that C1H4 would be a one carbon uh, molecule with all single bonds because it's an alkane, it would be methane. In C2H2, the number of carbons is two. If I double it, I get four, and then to get to two, I'd have to subtract two, which means that I am working with an alkyne. Because this is a two carbon alkyne, the molecule should be named ethyne. Up next, we have C3H6. Because I have doubled the number of carbons to get the number of hydrogens, that means I'm working with an alkene, and this alkene has three carbons, meaning it is a propene. Up next is C4H6. In this case, my four carbons have been doubled, and you subtract two to get to six. That would give me an alkyne. The alkyne has four carbons, so that would make it butyne. Of course, in this, I don't know where this double bond is. Uh, I'm sorry, this triple bond. Butyne has a triple bond somewhere, but based on the formula, I can't tell exactly where it is. Um, so for the purposes of just this question, we're leaving off the numbers, but that one certainly should have a number. In the case of ethyne, there's only one option, and same with propene, so those don't necessarily need um, numbers to identify where that multiple bond goes, but in butyne, you would really need one. Up, uh, finally, is C5H12, and uh, 5 times 2 would give us 10. To get to 12, you'd have to add 2, meaning that C5H12 represents an alkane. Because it is a 5-carbon alkane, we would call it pentane. And of course, there is no address here because there is nothing to point out. So there's no number on any of the alkanes. The next set of questions is on alkyl substituents, which means little carbons dangling off of a main carbon chain. And we have two questions here. The first is, what is the name of this molecule? And then finally, to draw a molecule of 2,2-dimethylpentane. All right, the top drawing is a 2-methylpentane, and the 2 is very specific here. Um, you may have, I would say the most common wrong answer would be 4-methylpentane because you have counted your carbons only from left to right and this methane would have wound up on carbon 4. We want to make sure that we're accounting for the fact that this molecule is turning and rotating in space. Um, I don't know if 2-methyl, I would assume 2-methylpentane is either a liquid or a gas. Either way, those molecules are moving. Even if it's a solid, it's moving. Um, so the fact that this molecule is moving means that we have to count the carbon chain both from left to right and right to left when we're numbering to figure out which perspective we're taking on this molecule. Because if I'm looking at it like my palm, you're looking at the back of my hand. So if my carbon's over here, for me, it looks like it's carbon one, but for you, it may look like it's carbon five. Um, so we want to make sure that we're accounting for the fact that this molecule rotates in space. That's why you count it twice. In this case, by counting it twice, you would find that the lowest number possible for that alkyl substituent, that methyl group, would be carbon 2. So that's why it would be 2-methylpentane. Again, methyl because it has a one carbon dangle and it's on carbon 2. And then the pentane says that the main chain is five carbons all single bonded. Now in the um, drawing that you had to do, I kind of work backwards here. Um, I work from the, the right to the the left in terms of the name. So I would start with pentane. This is a five carbon single bonded chain. And then 
Um, the next piece here is dimethyl. So I know that I need two methyl groups. And this 2,2 two tells me that both of my methyl groups are on carbon 2. One would have to go on the top and one would have to go on the bottom. The two methyls won't touch each other. They won't be bonded to each other because then they would be an ethyl group. So it's important to keep those two separate. One goes top, one goes bottom. The next set of questions is on functional groups. And the question is, what is the name of each of these molecules and to which functional group family does it belong? All right, this first one here up at the top left would be an alcohol. I know this because it has an OH group on that molecule. And the name of this would be 2-pentanol because this OH group is on the second carbon. Remember, you have to count both left to right and right to left to account for motion. And the OL on the end of that name says that there is an alcohol group on carbon 2 of a 5-carbon chain. Beneath that, we have 2-pentanone. This double bonded oxygen would either be an aldehyde or a ketone. Aldehydes will put that double bonded oxygen only at the ends of the molecules. The ketone will put it somewhere other than the end. So because this is not a carbon one, uh, that would make it a ketone, not an aldehyde. The main chain here is five carbons, so that is where the pentane comes in. The O-N-E ending indicates this is a ketone, so the ketone's functional group is that double bonded oxygen, and you can find it on carbon two. At the top right, we have an ether group. Ethers have that interrupting oxygen, as I like to call it, so when we name ethers, when we name ethers, either side of that oxygen are just going to be named as if they were alkyl substituents. They're not exactly, but that's how we have decided to name them. And our alkyl substituent dangles, methyl, ethyl, propyl, butyl, pentyl, whatever it is, we list those in alphabetical order in the name, and that's it. On the left side of my interrupting oxygen, I have a methyl. I have a one carbon group there. And then on the right side, I have a propyl, three carbon group. And those are, um, the name is completely independent of the order in the molecule. That just happens to work that way. If you were looking at it from the other face, it would look like it's a propyl methyl ether. That name doesn't exist because you take those dangles and you alphabetize them. Last in this group is an organic acid. Organic acids do not need to have a, a number. And that is because the double bonded O and the OH are always going to be on the end of the molecule. You will often see the chemical formula written with that COOH at the end of the molecule to help you realize that it's an acid. Uh, and this H right here is the H that'll pop off when this uh, compound dissolves in water and it provides that H plus the same way Arrhenia said. So um, this oic acid indicates that we're working with an organic acid and the pentan is coming from the fact that this is built on a five carbon single bonded chain. The last group of questions is on organic reactions and it's really just identifying organic reactions. I have found that my experience in my first years of organic chemistry uh, was really just finding names of reactions and what they do. It was kind of like matching. Um, but the more you learn, the more reactions there are. So the tougher it is to match. <laughs> so to begin, we're going to take these three kind of fragments and connect them to organic reactions. So which is the name of the reaction that breaks down an alkane to, I'm sorry, an alkene to an alkane, which one creates soap and which has alcohol and an acid as reactants. Addition reactions take an alkene or even an alkyne and will reduce that multiple bond. Um, in the case of an alkyne, it can be reduced to an alkene or to an alkane, just depending on how much stuff is going to add across that double bond. Typically, it's going to be something diatomic like chlorine or even hydrogen. Uh, the reaction that creates soap is called saponification. You take a fat or an oil and you would mix that with lye usually we would say but it just means a strong base and that will create soap and glycerin as a byproduct and then the uh, reaction that uses alcohol and an acid is an esterification uh, so the ester will be formed from the double bonded o of the acid and the o of the alcohol and they're gonna stick together <laughs>
the final set of questions. Uh, same concept, we are asking which reaction has alcohol as a product, which will link small molecules into larger molecules, and which one will burn a fuel. Fermentation is the reaction that has alcohol as a product. When we're talking about making bread, when, once you bake it, the alcohol will vaporize out. Um, but it also has carbon dioxide as a product, which is what makes the little air bubbles in uh, bread. A polymerization is the type of reaction that will link together monomers to make a very large polymer. We can use that for uh, making proteins, starches, but also plastics. And then finally, a combustion reaction burns some type of carbon fuel in the presence of oxygen. The products there are always going to be carbon dioxide and water. And that's everything. Please make sure to uh, go back, rewatch this video, or go back to the individual videos to hear the content again. You may need it. <laughs> Organic is a lot to keep straight. Not my favorite either. Um, any questions you have, please, of course, feel free to leave them in the comment section below the video. Subscribe so you don't miss the next lesson, and I'll see you there. Bye.